On October 29, 2018, the Japanese princess Ayako married the love of her life, Kei Moriaya. I'm awed by how blessed I am. Princess Ayako said on her wedding day, but at the same day when her love dreams come true, the princess had to say goodbye to her royal life. Why? Well, Japan's imperial house law mandates that female members of the royal family must surrender their title, fortune, and place in the imperial family should they choose to marry a commoner. K. Moriaya, the bridegroom, didn't belong to the royal family. He was a commoner who worked for a shipping company. On her wedding day, Princess Ayako said, I will leave the imperial family today, but I will remain unchanged in my support for His Majesty and Her Majesty. For love, Princess Ayako gives up her royal status. True love really does conquer all. Let me ask you, what have you done for love? Take this time to share with those around you some of your experience with love. What have you done for love? Love is a propeller of the world. Even though we may live in a broken world with imperfect relationships, we have a glimpse of love every day. We can see, experience love around us. The reality is that the apple does not fall far from the tree. What do I mean by that? Our roots, our DNA, carries love because we were created by a loving God who loves us. The Apostle John is categorical in stating that the person who does not love does not know God because God is love. Yes, God is love. Pay attention to what the Bible teaches us about the relationship between God and love. The Bible does not only express the affirmation that God loves, that He has the perfect love, and that human beings are the main subject of His love, 
but also that God himself, the essence of God, the quality of being God is love. He is the proper love. He is love himself. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in love them. Most of the time, when we start thinking or even talking about the being of God, we come to a wall. Try to explain how God can be one and also saying that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one God, can be quite a challenge. Our brains automatically try to check and check out and say, does not compute, does not compute. God is the absolute mystery of our lives. And because we as finite creatures have only very limited ways of understanding and expressing the transcendent glory of God's Trinitarian life, we will always fall short about it. We may use some illustrations or metaphors to comprehend or explain God, but all those have limitations and do not pro properly portray the Godhead. And thinking and talking about the divine nature of God, we should apply the principle 2929. Do you know the principle 2929? No? Let me begin explaining the principle 2929, but what the principle does not say. This principle does not say that we should be quiet about something that we don't know or that we should not explore it. It is not because we don't fully understand the nature of divinity that we should not think or talk about it. On the contrary then, we can never be done thinking and speaking and coming to an adoring wonder that we have been given such an extraordinary privilege of knowing about God and His own nature. So, what does the principle 2929 say? Take your Bible and read yourself the principle 2929 29 and Deuteronomy 2929. Please, read the Bible verse and discuss the principle 2929 with those around you.
I like how the New Living Translation presents Deuteronomy 29.29. 29. The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them, but we and our children are accountable forever for all that He has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. I think you got principle 2929. The principle 2929 says that God has some things that He has not revealed to us or given us the ability to fully understand. On the other hand, God has revealed to us and given us the means to comprehend or at least to have a glimpse of many things. And it is our responsibility to invest our time, resources and faculties to those aspects revealed. So the principle 29.29 is an adjustment, an alignment to what God wants us to know, to focus on and to live out. The principle 29.29 applied on our search for understanding who God is means that we should invest our heart, soul, power and strength on what God has revealed to us about himself. Then let me ask you, what is the main aspect that God has revealed to us about himself? What does God want us to know about him? How does God want us to understand and relate to him? There are many qualities and attributes about God described for us in His Word, but none of those are so plentiful, overflowing, and expressed throughout the Bible as the main theme, love. God is love. So, if you want to study God, to understand God, study love, His love. Learning about the biblical love, God's love, it is learning about God. That is the way He has revealed Himself to us. That is the way He wants to be known. That is the way He aims to relate to us. Love. Let's learn more about God by reading some Bible verses about God's love and its expressions. Take your Bible right now and read these Bible verses about God's love and how it is expressed. Share your thoughts with those around you.
Have you heard about the word perichoresis? The early church used this term perichoresis to refer to the relationship of the three persons of the triune God to one another. The word perichoresis is a compound word. The first word, peri, where we get the word perimeter or periscope, meaning round or circle. The last part is choresis, where we get the word choreography, the partnership of movement. So the word perichoresis indicates a sort of mutual containing of or enveloping of realities, which we also speak of as co-inherence or co-indwelling. So, in my humble understanding, Perichorosis describes the intimacy, the closeness, the unity, the dynamic, the passion, the work, the biting, the reciprocity, the harmony, the happiness, the indwelling, the intercommunion that each person of the triune God experiences with one another and their relationship. Perichorosis is the fellowship of three co-equal persons perfectly embraced in love and harmony and expressing an intimacy that no one can humanly comprehend. Some scholars express this perichoresis as the dance of love. Three loving persons loving each other and expressing their love through love. God the Father loves the Son and loves the Holy Spirit. The Son loves the Father and loves the Spirit. The Spirit loves the Father and the Son. It is a loving dynamic relationship by love and for love. The dance of love. From this dance of love by the Father, Son and the Spirit, the earth came into existence. Human beings were created. From this dance of love, a rescue plan came into place and Jesus Christ was given. From this dance of love, the concept of church was elaborated and the loving message given to be proclaimed. For this reason, when we invite someone to God, we are not inviting someone to a religion or denomination, nor to a set of beliefs or behaviors. When we invite someone to God, we are inviting them to a relationship, to a loving relationship, to the dance of love, to God's perichoresis. Because of this loving dance, I can humbly paraphrase Paul's words to the Romans. Everything comes from love. Everything happens through love. Everything ends up in love. Always glory, always praise. Yes, yes, yes. Let's celebrate God. Let's embrace God's revelation about Himself. Let's commemorate love. Let's join God in His loving dance. Let's invite others to this loving relationship. Let's be the church, loving and serving.